Hey everybody, it's Tom. Uh, we are going to be doing another install today. And today we are going to be doing our throttle block for the Skidoos. Uh, really nice throttle block. It's actually got a bunch of clearance built into it as we will show after it's installed. Uh, but it uses all the factory hardware and we get rid of the plastic block that is on the sled from the factory. So with that, let's get started. All right, so for this install, we're going to need a couple Allen wrenches and then a good side cutters. Uh, you're going to need a four millimeter and a three millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, we're going to start by removing the, the two screws that hold the throttle flipper to the throttle block itself from the factory. We're going to use our three millimeter Allen wrench and we're going to remove the top screw and also the bottom screw. And set those on a, uh, in a safe place so that you can reuse them later. So now that we have the throttle, the screws hold the flipper to the throttle block removed, we need to remove the cable from the flipper. I did forget to mention you will need a small pliers uh, that you can use when we pull the cable out, we'll hold on to it so we can get the, the little barbell out of the plastic. So what we're gonna do is I pull the flipper and then I'll hold on to the cable so it doesn't retract. Uh, so I'll hold it and then you should be able to come in here with the cable and kind of pull in that little barbell will pop out of the flipper. So now the flipper can just hang down. So now what we need to focus on is there is an E-clip that holds the cable into the factory throttle block. So we'll show you where this is at and how to remove that little clip. So as you can see, this is the little barbell that was in this channel on the inside of the flipper. So now we need to get that small E-clip or oh shit clip off. So we're going to take a, a needle nose pliers and we're going to grab this clip. It'll slide right off. So there's our clip. So set that off to the side. And now we can take and pull our cable and there is a channel where the cable slides through. So as you can see, it'll slide right up through the bottom and then we can basically just leave that off to the side for now. So now we can focus on getting the plastic block off of the handlebars. All right, for this, we're gonna need a four millimeter Allen wrench and we're gonna remove or loosen the Allen wrench that holds the throttle block to the front of the bars. So after you remove or loosen this uh, center screw, it's a four millimeter, the block will turn easily on the bars. On the bottom side of the throttle block, if you rotate it nicely, there is a catch here. As you can see on the bottom of the throttle block, there is this little pocket and there is a catch in there that holds that part together. So if you take a screwdriver and you kind of pry this a little bit and open up that gap, this center section will actually begin to slide out. So you can slide it out and then it'll pop out. So there's two halves. There's that half and then this half and this half will also come off of the handlebars. It does take a little bit of a little bit of prying and you kind of want to be careful because the 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 thro the heated grip wires run through the throttle block if you intend on keeping the plastic throttle block for a backup or whatever you will have to take these wires and go down into the connector under the hood depin them from the connector I know that I will never go back to this plastic throttle block. So my 
friendly tool is a side cutters. You do not want to cut the wires, but what I'm going to do is basically clip the plastic block and we're going to basically create our new channel for the wire. So we're going to get rid of all this so that way we don't have to depin the connector. So a little bit of removing material. Again, be careful of the wires. And now we have our throttle block removed. So again, you don't want to do it this way if you plan on keeping this throttle block or ever putting it back on. But for all the years of issues that I've had with throttle blocks, I could care less because I'm going to leave my billet throttle block on this sled if I ever sell it. So we're going to throw this away and we're going to proceed to install our new throttle block. So with our throttle block, you'll see that in the corner of the packaging, there is a little clip. And that little clip is actually what holds the cable into the throttle block. So I'll point that out when we're getting ready to install it. But leave that clip in the corner of the bag until you're ready to reinstall the cable. So we're going to remove our throttle block. You're going to need your three millimeter Allen wrench to remove the two screws on the face. So we're going to take the screws that we include out and as you can see there is the radius for the handlebars and then this little groove that groove is what the the heater grip or the greeted the the heated grip or the heater grip say that a bunch of times and straight in a row but that wire will run through that little loop right there so we want to make sure that we get it on the wire correctly And then we're going to th start threading the screws back onto the new block. So a good reference of where the throttle block sits is the edge of our block basically sits almost even with the edge of the rubber grips on your bars. So I will just not even snug it up, but I'll get it just so there's a little bit of drag on the bars and then I always make sure that I adjust the screws the same amount so that the gap here on the top and the bottom are the same so we have our wires run through the blocks now we're just snugging up now we're just snugging up the two screws on the face so now we can start reinstalling our flipper or the cable in the flipper and then we'll be able to put it back onto the throttle block. So again in reverse order we are going to pull the cable out, hold it with our short pliers and then we're going to take that barbell and that barbell is going to fit right back into that and it snaps right into place. So we're going to pull the cable with the flipper and then we have a groove cut into our throttle block that it slides right in. And now we can find the little clip that we include to hold the cable into the body itself. So we're going to remove this clip and then we're going to install it on the end of the cable. All right, so for this little clip, I really like to use a little pliers to hold it because they're so small that it kind of causes problems with holding on to them. So we want to take the little clip and I'll try and rotate this up so you can see it best as you can. But there's a snap ring groove way out here on the end of the cable. So we're going to take the clip and get it positioned and we're going to slide it over that groove and then use the pliers to snap it right into place just like that. So now we have the clip installed or the cable installed, the clip installed, the cable retainer clip installed. So now we can go ahead and put our two screws in that hold the flipper 
to the throttle block. So again, we're going to need a three millimeter Allen wrench. We're going to grab our two screws that we had earlier. Uh, something that I do recommend is put a little bit of blue Loctite on the end of the threads. So that way when it threads into the, the billet throttle block that it's not going to come loose and you're not going to want to lose one of these threads. So we're going to take our three millimeter Allen wrench, line up the holes, and we're going to thread the top one in first. So if you look at these screws, you're going to see that there's a shoulder. There's the threads and the shoulder. So if you tighten it down, that shoulder is going to hit our throttle block and it's going to stop. So don't torque these to 100 foot pounds. It's only going to take a few foot pounds because as soon as you feel those threads or the shoulder bottom out, it will stop. So you can see that shoulder. We're going to put a drop of Loctite on this one and then install this one into the bottom. Dro just a tiny drop of red Loctite or blue, whichever one you have. We're going to start this screw into the bottom. And then we're going to tighten it up with our Allen wrench. So now we can reposition our throttle block of where it is comfortable for us on the handlebars. And just keep in mind that you can adjust it in and out both ways. So find the spot that's comfortable, comfortable for you. And then we tighten up the two screws on the face of the throttle block to hold it in position. The other thing that you do want to check and be conscious of is when you go wide open with your throttle, reach in and grab the cable in here to make sure there's no more movement. You do want a little bit of gap between the throttle flipper and the face of the throttle block so that we make sure that we know that the, the butterflies in the throttle body, bodies are completely closing. So I do have about two, the thickness of two credit cards in here. So that'll be just fine. If you want, you can adjust it. So there is this shiny black sleeve on the inside of the, the handlebars that if you cut the zip tie, slide the sleeve off, then you can adjust that cable. Uh, in this instance, we don't need to adjust it. So we're gonna leave it exactly where it sits. If you have any questions about any of the products that we featured in any of these install videos, feel free to reach out and contact us through Facebook, Instagram, or give us a call here at the shop. Thanks and have a great day.